from Heartland, Michigan. Alexa sound. Alexa, what is my notification? Your package has been delivered. Hmm, it says here, but it's not. Can you check the yellow? Yes, it says it's been delivered. That's on our porch. Have you ever got a package get misdelivered, meaning someone else gets your package and you get someone else's? We have a solution for you. Introducing chicken code. Scan the house, the light will turn green if it's the right one. Or red if it isn't. Sorry, USPS, you've got the wrong address. Have a great day! Before we picked the project, we decided we need to run mobile deliveries and transportation. We watched YouTube videos about cargo ships and looked at their innovation models for inspiration. We took a field trip to Wheels on Wheels, a company that transports cars. We learned a lot from the owner. TJ included his, his two biggest problems, keeping up with government regulation and finding good employees, aka people to drive the trucks. Smile! We used our whiteboards during a meeting to list a bunch of, di di po of different problems and possible solutions. In the end, we voted as a team and decided to focus on package misdelivery. The reason we picked it is it happened to each of us. Our problem was how can we help delivery drivers make sure they are leaving the, the package at the, at, the, at the right location. We brainstormed a number of possible solutions, such as using GPS drones and underground tunnels, but wanted to focus on something that was inexpensive and easy to implement. We realized that all package delivery companies already use barcodes, so we decided to start researching on barcodes. We first found out there are two main types, 1D and 2D. 1D can be read by a laser scanner, and 2D needs an image scanner or like a camera. We focus on Amazon, FedEx, UPS, and USPS because those are the most common for our area. They all use code 128. They all use different types of 2D barcodes, though. UPS uses maxi code. FedEx and U USPS use PDF 417, and Amazon uses QR codes. Our solution is to have the package delivery person scan both the packages, package barcode and the house barcode, and their scanning tool will tell them if it matches. We searched online with our coach and she bought us this barcode reader and an RGB LED because we like RGBs. We used one of her Raspberry Pis and we built this prototype. We picked the barcode reader because it came with an example of Python code and the instructions on how to make it work with the Raspberry Pi. We connect it with a USB cable. We followed the instructions and could read a bunch of different barcodes. We didn't meet for almost a month because our coach and half of us had COVID. We did meet online and learned a bit of Python. And we ended up writing a game where two dice are rolled and if they match, the player won. Once we could meet back in person, our coach talked about LEDs. Before we, before we made our bars code scanner, we had to learn about LEDs. So first we made a basic circuit where when you push a button, an LED will turn on with a resistor, an LED, and a battery pack, and a button, of course. But then we made it more complex where we use a battery pack, but three buttons to make it into RGB with a LED that has four pegs, which are for each color, which is red, green, in, blue, and ground. We learned about GPIOs on the Raspberry Pi. It is a pin that can make LEDs go on and off. We found an example programmer to control GPIO pin, combine the barcode example program, GPIO programs in our dice game to make this work. We reached out to UPS and FedEx employees over email. Kira's grandpa used to work at FedEx and told us about the barcode types they use and how they mostly use GPS to find houses and rely on drivers to see numbers on houses which may not be clear. These were people our parents knew from their jobs. Christian at UPS told us that they always use code 39 code 128 and maxi codes and sometimes matrix codes. He showed us where to find out how many packages were successfully delivered every day. We found out that 4% are not. 
They are lost or late and often misdelivered. He told us that UPS relies heavily on GPS, but that is more accurate for cities and not rural areas. They do use a double barcode idea like we have at their pickup lockers, but he hadn't thought of putting them on houses and thought it was a really good idea. We also created a survey that our coach posted on Facebook and our parents shared. We had almost 200 responses. Everyone had a package delivered and mostly at home. Amazon, FedEx, UPS, and USPS were the most common companies delivering. About two-thirds of the people have had a package misdelivered. USPS was usually responsible for that, but Amazon, FedEx, and UPS were also guilty. Over half of the people said they'd put a barcode on their homes, and another 30% said maybe if we told them more. Only 10% said no, and those were the people that have never had a package misdelivery. We had an open field for feedback and got some great comments, including house was a new build and Google Maps also showed it at the wrong house. We did a simple cost analysis, and we think the benefits are worth the cost. Stickers are inexpensive and can be easily replaced. Each company already uses a scanner that supports 2D barcodes and only needs to update their software. We think QR codes would be flexible enough and should probably point to a website that has information so people can update it when they move or have kids. Looking at the future, this could also help with more automated deliveries. Drones or other automated robots could use the house barcodes to know they're at the right house.